black sun in the hizzle. Oh, for shizzle dizzle. We got an excellent show here today. But before we get started, I want to say that the views and expressions of the arena does not reflect those of Comcast, his staff, or affiliates. With that being said, we're going to deal with immigration, immigration additions. All right, so to get started, I want to introduce the guests to my right. To my right. This is what I love about having a little TV <laughs> in the studio. To my right, we've got brother. How you doing? Introduce yourself. Thank you, brother. I appreciate it. My name is Terrence Courtney, and I'm with the Black Alliance for Just Immigration. And the mission of our group is to bring together or unify black immigrants and black Americans to fight for human rights, broadly speaking. But also, we want to talk about changing immigration laws, okay. fighting mass incarceration, right. and uh, fighting for economic justice. Okay, good, mm -hmm. good. Mm -hmm. And to his right, we've got Brother Yanga. Peace, what's good, man? It's, it's good. always good to be back on the show. You yeah, know it's that. It's good to have you back on, Yanga. Oh, yeah, man, discussing these, these high-powered issues. Oh, yeah, yeah. man. You, his immigration's gonna get thick. Oh, yeah. And to oh, yeah. his right, we got King. Uh-oh. See? See how you do it? <laughs> King! Servant. No, Immigrant. King. <laughs> refugee. Ain't that what they called our fem family down there in Hurricane Katrina? Yeah, the refugees. Yeah, they did. Yeah. They did. Yeah. They did. Yeah. They did. All right. Refugee. Yeah. And they ain't talking about uh, my girl Lauren Hill and her <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Right. Okay, okay. <laughs> All right. So, um, <clears throat> we're going to give the back crew all right there. Let's just start. Okay. Um, Giddy. Okay. Terrence, it's immigration issue, you know. Bring us up to speed. You know what? Why does it affect? Why? Why are we black folks talking about immigration mm. here today? Well, I mean, we're talking about immigration because it's something that affects us. It's something that matters in everybody's lives, right? All right. And I think the point of Baji, my organization, is to reveal to people what they really already know but don't think about very much, and that's how immigration laws and policies kind of strike home every day. Right. Mm -hmm. So, for example. I think with Baji, we believe that in order to have a full understanding of what's going on with immigration, you need to put on a set of sunglasses that are, have a black perspective. Right. And so that way you can look at the problem from a black perspective. So why is that important? Mm -hmm. Well, so for example, when you have a black perspective, you come to understand that many of the laws and policies that are being proposed by Obama, the US Senate, the Congress, are not good for black people, black immigrants, or black Americans. Mm -hmm. And that really we're moving toward a circumstance where, whereby white people who by mid-century, many predict, will be the minority. Mm -hmm. Absolutely right. And they're using this immigration conversation as a way to put in place laws and mechanisms to maintain white supremacy should that day actually arrive, right? Mm. And in many ways, it's it's similar to that period after the Civil War, where after black people had gained some measure of political power, the, there was a backlash. Mm -hmm. And white people started to implement laws that we came to know mm -hmm. as Jim Crow laws. Mm -hmm. right? So in many ways, we're in a similar period where you know, after the gains that our people made and through social struggle, mm -hmm. white people are putting in place laws to maintain supremacy of white mm -hmm. supremacy and, and capitalism, quite frankly. Right. So, so let me give you a picture of the state of black immigrants in America and the state of black Americans. Okay. Most people don't notice that black immigrants have the highest rate of unemployment of all immigrant mm. groups. Mm. Right. Black immigrants have some of the lowest wages of all immigrant groups. Oh, man. Some of the lowest wages? Some of the lowest, num the number two lowest wage next to Mexicans. However, if you're a black woman, a Haitian woman, you sit at the very bottom of the American wage scale, mm. right? And number, wow. my third point I want to make is that uh, black immigrants only represent 10% of all immigrants that come to the United States, mm -hmm. right. but they are five times more likely to be detained and deported, mm -hmm. right? Wow. And so all of those factors closely mirror a life for black folks who are born here, mm -hmm. right? 
we have some of the highest unemployment rates of all Absolutely. U.S. citizens. That's right. We make some of the lowest wages exactly. of all U.S. citizens. Mm -hmm. And we're more likely than any other ethnicity to be incarcerated, right, right, in the mass incarceration. So we see immediately how the lives of black immigrants and black Americans are very much in symmetry, you know, very Jared, congruent. Oh, no, you just brought something to my, go ahead, Yang, because he just no, made ahead. me. I don't want to. No, I'm just saying that the whole immigration thing was an attack on black nationalists from the start, mm -hmm. Marcus exactly. Garvey. Mm -hmm. So yeah, exactly. now I'm like, okay. But here's my question, you know, you know how the arena is, but sometimes we have to play devil's advocate. Does it, does it, does it help? Are harmless because when we do, we talk about integration laws or something like this. Is it opening up the market for other ethnicities to come in and to start to squeeze us out again? Like, um, as a people, like, I mean, just we use, for example, California, LA, what's right. happening in there between yes, the Latinos and the black people. So, do they take advantage of is this another case of us getting with something and, and, you know, um, standing behind it, promoting it, really, you know, getting to everything behind it, opening up immigration laws and making it easy for another group of people to come in, and then we still just take the back of the bus, or? Well, um, the, I'm glad you raised that point because it raises one of the key uh, things we have to deal with when we're talking about immigration, mm -hmm. and that's the relationship between black folks and other immigrants, mm -hmm. particularly Latino immigrants, mm -hmm. because the white supremacists like to drive wedges between mm -hmm. those they Absolutely. oppress. Absolutely. Yes. So it's like asking, well, if the white slave master got their boot on my neck and a Latino's neck, if I fight the white supremacist, don't I get him off of both of our necks? Yeah. And is that okay? Mm -hmm. I think it's okay. Also, I say, when they're exploiting both of us for profit mm -hmm. and for supremacy, mm -hmm. it right. makes strategic sense to cooperate. Mm -hmm. And then the other point I'll make is it's, a lot of people like to put forward the idea that somehow they may be stealing jobs from us right, that's, or they yeah. may be taking uh, social services and resources mm -hmm. that belong to us. Right. Taking away our food stamps. Mm -hmm. and food but, <laughs> but all of that is part of the mythology they use to keep us divided. Because really the people who get the most social services are uh, white them. people. Thank right. you. Right. Yeah. Thank you. And where do those the tax dollars for those social services come from. We are taxed at higher rates than rich white people. Mm -hmm. That's right. So really, those resources that we get belong to us and then some. Mm -hmm. So if we really want to correct this situation, we shouldn't get into this kind of thing of us versus other oppressed people. Mm -hmm. right. Rather than we should start to see our target is the oppressor. Mm -hmm. You know, some people mm -hmm. use this. Uh, I guess you could say this metaphor of crabs in a barrel. Yes. But I like to look at that like this. Crabs in a barrel don't have the consciousness to understand who put them in the barrel. Exactly. Wow. So they turn upon each other, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So what we have to do is be better than crabs. Mm -hmm. We have to understand that our enemy aren't other oppressed people, mm -hmm. be they Asian or, mm -hmm. or Latino that's or right. African. Mm -hmm. Our oppressor is the enemy, and that's the white man mm -hmm. and capitalism. Mm -hmm. Right, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Well, let me just jump in here because uh, I remember there being an idol in uh, New York Harbor called the Statue of Liberty. And at the base of that large idol, it has a statement that says, send me your poor, mm -hmm. your hungry, your huddled masses, mm -hmm. except your black folks. Right. That was a small print. Yeah. Right, right. You have actually... Uh, elucidated and explained very uh, effectively is the unequal treatment that we have seen not only in the political process, mm -hmm. the educational process, the immigration <laughs> process, whatever process Whitey got his plan, his hand in, yeah. if we're involved in it, we're not going to get an equal share. Right. It comes to the point now, Barack Obama is talking about equal pay for women. Mm -hmm. Now, if this white man is not going to treat his mama, his grandmama, <laughs> his sister, his auntie, and his aunt, aunts right, mm -hmm. what makes you think of voting for him going to make him treat That's us right? right? Yeah. So the immigration issue, they showed us when I mentioned Hurricane Katrina. You had citizens mm -hmm. so -called. born here, so-called, you know, and, and to uh, say that they, okay, I'll get closer, thank you to say that they are American, but the first chance Whitey got, 
during a very traumatic yes. situation, mm. what were we called? Refugees, refugees, right. Dissed himself and they also caused refugees during the reconstruction era, too. Mm -hmm. You understand? Yeah. So a refugee and an immigrant are basically the same mm -hmm. thing. Right. How we fashion that, and the question is, see, you, Martin Luther King, Malcolm X, uh, Marcus Garvey, they fought against what you were talking about, this government. Some mm -hmm. of them are not with us anymore. Mm -hmm. The others were deported. So even when uh, uh, many of the uh, white folks and, and the people who think like white folks say, if you don't like it here, why don't you leave? Yeah. When we start leaving, they still had a problem. Still had a problem. Come on, man. And, and, and let me respond to that because I think it's an important point. I, I've heard that, you know, if you don't like it, why don't you leave? Hello. <laughs> but <laughs> that kind of talk really is ignorant. Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Because when you think of the power of white supremacy and capitalism mm -hmm. in the 21st century. Give me some air, sweetheart. I'm starting to sweat. This topic is getting hot. <laughs> <laughs> when you think of all those things in the 21st century, you have to realize that those forces are global. Thank There's you. no place right. to run. Mm -hmm. Thank you. If you go to the Caribbean, these factors are why Jamaicans and Trinidadians and Caribbeans come to the America because right. American forces are there exploiting the people, Thank mm -hmm. you. exploiting the land, Thank you. right? Impoverishing the masses. Yes. You could try to run to Africa. Yes. But we know neocolonialism is in mm -hmm. every nation yes. on the continent. Yes. yes. That's so right. there's no running place. That's right. What I argue is that we need to stay where we are, fight for our human rights, yeah, that's right. and then transform society in a global movement. That mm -hmm. way, we can go wherever we want whenever we get ready oh, and have the needs of the people always manifested and satisfied. Sure. Well, here's, 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 my, here's one of my concerns as, as a nationalist. Is like, and it goes back to what you were saying, Brother Terrence, and I agree wholeheartedly. When you, the enemy of my enemy is my friend, That's so right. to speak. Okay. Okay. So we're fighting, you know, we understand that we're fighting the same oppressor, especially with these immigration laws, and that, you know, if he has his foot on my neck and he has his foot on our Latino brothers and sisters' neck or anyone else's neck, that it would be advantageous for us to combine and fight. But historically, we've been shown that when we have taken that route, that we have still come on the bottom of the barrel. Point in case, I look at the relationship with the uh, black and the German uh, Jews that came over here after World War II, or fleeing Hitler's oppression. Mm -hmm. They got together, and even before that thing, they formed the NAACP. We had a working relationship with, they would, you know, had obviously a lot of buildings in Harlem and this and that. And once they got recognized and got this oppressor off their neck, they went off and formed their own little enclaves. And I'm from Cleveland, where they have a whole Jewish community from synagogue to grocery stores. Mm -hmm. You know, you can get everything in there. And black people, we still found ourselves in the same position that we were. One of my concerns is, and I will hope you address, and mm -hmm. thank you so much for being on the show, because yes. this is a good thank topic. Thank you. Absolutely. Um, <laughs> is that, is, is if we, and this isn't a dislike for any other people, I think that is just a concern for us as a people, uh, that if we help uh, our, if our primary focus on integration is so general, and not specific, and this is one of my questions, is this spe it, 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 the areas that are specifically targeted for us as African descendants of people from Haiti, Jamaica, whatever our people are trying to come over here. If we're so general and help all the people of immigration, once that oppressor's foot is off their neck, like our Latino brothers and sisters, will they go establish their own enc enclaves and keep their foot on our neck? Like we see happening in California where there are land grabs and grabs from jobs and resources. And in, in, in my conclusion, we look at the thing where we were talking about jobs. Uh, since they've been um, very hard on some things, I think what's this E30, E something, that a lot of, that has pushed a lot of Latino people out of the workplace. I know a young man that got two jobs. Mm. You know, and I won't say right. the places for advertising. We're oh, talking about purposes. the verification thing. That yeah, they, the e, yeah, e verify. Yeah, yeah. E verify. Okay. That's a lot right. of that yeah, has went right. through. I know a young man that has, I mean, literally went from selling drugs, mm -hmm. literally, to having two jobs now. Wow. You know what I'm saying? Behind that. So it's a, you know, as far as we're looking at our place here in America, as Africans here in America, it's a real, you know, it's a real, like, uh, delicate balance. Delicate balance. Yeah. I mean, how do you balance and, and how do you come to our people in this, you know what I'm saying? Man, I... I I like this show already. Um, yeah, y'all asked the right questions. Um, so the way I hear your question, if I could sum it up, is uh, what, what is the value of a united front? Mm -hmm. What is Absolutely. the value of Absolutely. coalition and cooperation mm -hmm. when often in history, united fronts uh, disintegrate and splinter right. apart, mm -hmm. and then some forces who were formerly oppressed become oppressors and vice versa. Mm -hmm. so, um, 
The best way to answer that question is to understand that what is the thing that transforms people who were once oppressed to become oppressors? Because they even exist in the black community. Right, Absolutely. Yeah, right. Yeah. We have right. opportunists who, after the so-called civil rights movement, or what I call the black liberation movement, mm -hmm. became oppressors. Yes. Mm -hmm. Obama is one of them. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. Right. So we have black people. So in every oppressed group, you have opportunists who are willing to take advantage of a social movement mm -hmm. or a social change or a liberation struggle mm -hmm. for their own ends. Absolutely. And then that's why what we say at Baiji is the movement we create now must have a very clear understanding of who's allowed to be in the United Front. Mm -hmm. So I'm here today to say I'm not looking to have every single black person join the struggle. That's mm -hmm. right. If you hold conservative or values of the oppressors, then time out for you. Yeah. I'm looking for people who have a very progressive outlook, mm -hmm. people who, have, who want radical change for human rights mm -hmm. and social justice okay, and right. economic justice. Mm -hmm. So if you build your united front or your coalition with those, and they won't be everybody. Right. We're not going to get right. everybody. Right. We right. don't have to have everyone. Exactly. Mm -hmm. But if we build this with those forces, mm -hmm. right, who share common values and, and, and common principles, mm -hmm. then we're more likely to get out good outcomes but finally, at the end of the day, the reason that we at the Black Alliance for Just Immigration say we have to have a black perspective mm -hmm. is that we understand that coalition with the Latino community is right and important. Right. But we have to build unity within ourselves. Yes. So we have to take time to do that because unity just doesn't happen. Right. People don't just say, hey, black power, and then I'm down, right? right. <laughs> I, uh, I agree with what uh, the black revolutionary from Guinea-Bissau, uh, Amilcar Cabral mm -hmm. said. Mm -hmm. And he said that unity is not the goal. Mm -hmm. That's not the goal. Mm -hmm. okay. Unity is a means to struggle for liberation. Mm -hmm. Unity is a tool. Mm -hmm. That's what it is. Mm -hmm. So once we get black people together, some magical thing is not going to happen. Right. Right. That right. means we're free. Right. No, when we get black people together, then we have to create a strategy to defeat oppression. Mm -hmm. So right. unity gives us the means to do that, because if we're not united ourselves, mm -hmm. how can we partner in a coalition with any other group? Mm -hmm. It makes no sense. A coalition is a partnership of organizations. So you first have to have an organization to mm -hmm. be in a coalition. That's right. Otherwise, you're not in a coalition. So. I answer your question in this way because it's a very deep and penetrating question, and sure. it's very complicated. Mm -hmm. There's no kind of very cookie cutter answer. No cookie mm -hmm. cutter answer, and there's no sound bite I can give you. Mm -hmm. Right? These are very deep matters of social change, right? Yes. And that's why you have to have a very uh, comprehensive understanding of the problem and solutions. Mm -hmm. So Let me jump in here with one uh, because uh, you, 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 you dealt with did you have no, 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 yes, yes. because. Uh, there are two fronts that you've talked about and two components of the conversation here that you've talked about that we have discussed on this show extensively. One, when you talked about immigration and you talked about how we will uh, define the unifying point, I believe it has to do with one's own self-identity. Mm. See, in America, as immigrants, what was taken from us was our identity. Yeah. Right. So if you don't have any knowledge of your historical past, your tribal history, your geographical location, the language in which your people spake, even though now you, see you say come to America and, and use America as a base, well the world is our base, mm. because there are more people that look like you and me than look like the uh, aforementioned European that has less melanin. <laughs> and see, so first of all, the first state place would be for the individual to develop his understanding of whom he or she is mm -hmm. and from whence they come. That's what they cut us off from. Secondly, how we address it in the legal perspective has to do with the birth certificate. You as a child of an immigrant would say you're an American, but you and I know both know that we right. were not originally from America. We're the original people, but we're not from America. So on your birth certificate, if it says black, colored, Negro, any of those other fraudulent terms that the federal government has labeled its present slaves, and you accept that, it's not what people call you, it's what you answer to. 
So I believe the immigration issue has to have a legal component that helps to attack the fraud at the government level and its misidentification of us. So you've got two aspects. You've got one, the personal responsibility of the individual defining his ancestral lineage and being doing the research to prove it, and then two, uh, going to a legal recourse against this government for misidentifying us. We are people, but they have us labeled really as nothing more than their products. Yeah, but Terrence, and I want to add that, that too because you got a lot of people who come from Jamaica. I've, I've experienced this myself and say, well, no, I'm not black, I'm Jamaican. Exactly. I'm not Haitian, I'm, you know, but it's kind of complex do getting because you got, I, I have a, a one friend of mine, I have him on the show, he's, he's, he's Chinese, but he's Jamaican. Exactly. He'll tell you quick, no, I'm yeah. Jamaican, but he's yeah. Chinese though, you know what I'm saying? And you have Indians, that, so it's, it's kind of complicated because you have people that represent the nation of Jamaica, mm -hmm. but still they're not, they're not uh, I guess Terrence, what, what I'm trying to ask here is that you have people who are not identifying as being black, so mm -hmm. how do you show them that it would be in their best interest to unite? Because I say unite, you know. Well, when you say being black, what is black? Black is well, zero. It's well, what the white man called you as a but what, 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 I'm, what I'm saying, Gideon, is that we don't have time for that when Monsanto is poisoning our water, food, well, and air. I mean, this, I mean, I mean yeah, again, so again, y'all are raising very kind of deep questions. And so the question is, what is the role of identity in, in the struggle? And as I said before, at this point in, our, in the point in the struggle, we have to look at how we build relationships with those who are already in the space to receive the information. And then as the movement grows, those are who are somewhat on the fence about right. who they are as far as being an African or black person will be transformed, right? So none of us here sitting around this table, you know, from infancy thought of ourselves as black. This is something we learn from the movements mm. and from people around us. And, and from our oppressor. So we understood that because there was a social movement that came that made it important, made it powerful, made it good to be black mm -hmm. or African. So I think social movements are gonna help those who are, at this point, unaware. So I get back to this, is we wanna build movements with people who already understand that they're African, mm -hmm. who right, already understand right. they're black. Because those are the people who will see the utility in what I'm talking about. Sure. And, and those are the people who will understand why it's important to have a black perspective. You raised another important point, and that is that what, we, what I might call the internationalization of the movement. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So when I talk right. about doing this work, I'm talking about doing this work in many ways like you might see uh, on Star Trek, three-dimensional chess. Okay. On one level, we operate here in the city of Atlanta or in Georgia mm -hmm. or regionally. Mm -hmm. Then we want to build power nationally, mm -hmm. but we also want to build power and connection right. to other global struggles of similar nature mm -hmm. happening throughout the world. Mm -hmm. Because if you look at what's happening in Israel right now, mm -hmm. the white Israelis are attacking black African immigrants. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. That's right. If you look at what's yeah. happening in Germany right. and mm -hmm. Europe, mm -hmm. there are places that are attacking black immigrants. Absolutely. Right. Mm -hmm. Even right. in a place that's mostly black like Brazil, yes. mm -hmm. you have a, a racist system that targets the darker Absolutely. people. So, the struggle is international, but we have to understand that we also have to operate where we are, right? So in order to actually be effective in an international struggle, you have to wage struggle locally. And that gets to another point you, you mentioned where you talked about the legal exactly. aspect of it. And That's huge. Let me say this. I think for the last 40 years, however, our people have overemphasized the legal struggle. Mm -hmm. What I'm calling for is a real social change, a social movement that creates a crisis in the system itself. Gotcha. Because we, we, we're not going to get anywhere just filing lawsuits. Mm -hmm. Right, right. The lawsuits of the civil rights movement are only effective because they came in tandem with a social movement that created a crisis in society. But have they truly been effective? Well, I'll put it this way. White supremacy still exists, but Jim Crow as a legal system does not. Right. So right. they had to find a new way okay. to implement white supremacy. Right. Exactly. Once they couldn't have signs that say no colors allowed, they had to find ways to go 
around and become more subtle. Exactly. But that's still a victory, right? And so what I'm arguing is that we have to use tools that worked before, but we have to not be the opportunists of the past who saw once Jim Crow was defeated, they had the opportunity. Because now, let, me, let, me, let, let me finish. Let me let me finish because this is important. Has Jim Crow been defeated? I think he's saying Jim Crow as a legal system mm -hmm. has been. As they can't put up color on anymore. Yeah. But they create other mechanisms for segregation, like uh, geography. So the fact that MARTA doesn't effectively go throughout the region is a form of de facto segregation. segregation. Now, right. de jure, legalized segregation is when they say no niggas allowed. Yeah. Right, right. Yeah. But they can't do that anymore. Okay. Right? We know racists are still there, and we know it operates. That's why I talk about racism as a structural phenomenon. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. I'm not talking about individual bigots. Mm -hmm. exactly. I don't care what the individual mm -hmm. person thinks of black people. Mm -hmm. What right. I care about are laws that disproportionately attack our people, structural mechanisms that under or miseducate our people, right? right. So when I talk about the change I'm, I'm referring to, I'm talking about creating a social movement that creates a crisis in the system that allows us the opportunity to destroy the system in total and build something new. Well, that's exactly. And that's, that's my whole thing. What is the, when we're looking at it, what is the end game? When we talk about integration, if we're talking about... Well, let me say this. I, that's a good point. I'm not talking about integration. Yeah, well, I'm just talking about, it, it, as far as the integration, talk about any topic. When we're talking about the end game for African descendants or Africans here in America, we have to... My thing is, if we're talking about being included uh, in the system, counting as, counted as, loosely would I say, a citizen or whatever, looking for certain rights within the system, a general integration, whether it be Haitians or Jamaicans or whatever, like you were saying, if it doesn't, right. th do we run the risk of them just coming over, opening the gates and people coming over and still practicing a form of nationalism and segregation or separation or from classism. us, or classism yes, from right. us on a whole, like, you know, take an example, and I go back to my Latino brothers and sisters, because right now that's the, you know, they are the poster children for this immigration thing, you know, everybody's talking about, so this is why this is good to have Brother Terrence on the show. Absolutely. But we look at, I can remember years back uh, when I was coming up, you didn't have shows like Dora the Explorer. Mm -hmm. There was no controversy of what was the principle that was suspended for making children speak English. Mm. Said where she was no Spanish in the schools. She didn't say oh, they couldn't speak Texas. Spanish. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. But she said, while in school, no Spanish. Yeah. And this is a, a so-called, right now, still an English-speaking country. Are we yeah. caught up? Are we, are we, do we run the risk of jeopardizing? We're English-speaking people. Whether okay. we, you know, like it or not, being Africans descended, do we run the risk of empowering other people, like I said, to come over with their nationalism? Okay. And we haven't, we're not fighting for it. Like, if the fight for integration would be to establish our place here, the saying, uh, it, somebody help me word this thing out, what I'm trying to basically, what no, I'm you trying to say. You, got it. you, you know what I'm saying? I'm just, I'm always concerned that we lend our aid and effort behind every cause. Mm -hmm. And at the end of the day, we still come out the back of the cause. Like, should Spanish be the uh, second language or should, you know, Latin America, should this thing take over? Then we're stuck again learning a whole new culture. Like we see the effect of it on our children. Mm -hmm. You know, I work with a lot of the youth. Mm -hmm. A lot of the youth now call themselves, what's that major rap group? The Black Amigos. Yeah. They call Kirkwood Little Mexico. Yeah. So we run the risk of even their culture influencing us and coming over and all out of Sam of, of and, and we should be humanitarians. A nationalist is a humanitarian in itself because we don't want oppression for any people. Right. We don't want to be the oppressor of any people. But do we run the risk of saying, you know, um, for whether it be Jamaican, Haitian, anybody, come on over, we're going to help fight, we're going to help establish, and at the end of the day, you establish businesses that targeted us for, you know, to be consumers but not to be empowered. You, you, you do this and you do that, and we see it all the time. You know, you go to the flea market, you see the Nigerians here and the Haitians there, and we're always excluded, but we are always on the front line of fighting against oppression and injustice. And I, wanna, I, well, I wanted to add on to that, too, because, you know, uh, Colin Powell is from Panama, correct? Right. No, I think he's Jamaican. Jamaican, Jamaican. okay, Jamaican. Okay, mm -hmm. so um, kind of relating to what Yang was saying, like, okay, you were saying that, you know, all black people are not going to, come on board with this. So, I mean, what I'm, I guess what I'm asking is you, you have different types of black people. You got nationalists, mm -hmm. you got the bourgeoisie, mm -hmm. you got those that will look the other way, mm -hmm. police violence, and you got those that, you know, so, so what interests, you know what I'm saying, I guess, how, how do we 
filter what interests because you you got you got immigrants against immigrants. Let's look at the Cubans. I'm sorry. Yeah, the Cubans that are against the Haitians. Mm. They'd be the main ones. No, they got to go back to Haiti. Send them back. You know what I'm saying? And they were once yeah. immigrants. Yeah, hello. So well, America, and it's, they right. immigrants. Come well, right. Well, yeah, right. Right. So, well, right. that's the point. I think that's a good segue to a point I wanted to make because I think your question is a good one. But I asked, I will turn the question upside down. Is like, what risk do we run by defending European culture? Like right. the English language. Uh, right. Annihilation? Like the what Bible. Risk, <laughs> what risk do we run by defending Genocide. the U.S. borders, right. which it took from Mexico? Hey, hello. A lot of people don't. Yeah. A lot of people don't know that half of what we call the United States yes, was today Mexico. was was once Mexico. Absolutely. Words like Colorado. Yes. That's Spanish. Yes. Oregon. Yes. That's Los Spanish. Angeles. California. Uh, Nevada. Nevada. I <laughs> so I think. I think what the question we should be asking ourselves is what risk do we run by allowing the white supremacist and white cultural domination of the United States? Mm -hmm. I actually welcome other languages. Certainly. Right, right. I think the more languages that we profuse throughout our society, including African languages, mm -hmm. including things like Haitian Creole, mm -hmm. things like that will help democratize the United States and help defeat white supremacist do domination. Mm -hmm. Because I think ultimately, mm -hmm. we have to understand that, you know, black people can't win the fight against oppression by themselves. Mm -hmm. right. We have to have right. some allies, yeah. right? right? And so that goes back to your question is, who will our allies be from within the black community and from without? As I said before, my point of view is, is I look at any group of people as involved in a class struggle. Yeah. The class struggle okay. is working class blacks, Latinos, whoever, mm -hmm. versus bu the bourgeoisie or mm -hmm. the capitalists. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Because you got capitalist Negroes who don't have no love for us. Absolutely. Right. That's right. They will exploit us. They will exploit us as soon right. as a white man. Absolutely. Maybe or not more, sooner. Or be exactly. be more effective at it. Exactly. Absolutely. Because we exactly. trust this but one. It, when you look at Obama, he's right. so effective because black yes. people are afraid to challenge him. Yes. Now, if he was a white man doing the very same things, right. we would denounce him. Exactly. Yeah. We denounce Bush. Bush became a joke to mm -hmm. everybody. Exactly. But nobody would. If you say something about Obama, you better be ready right. to struggle. Right. You know. So mm -hmm. that answers the question of who we're talking about. So if you're a nationalist, or if you're not, if you're an African, who believes in the values that I've been talking about who will fight alongside first your people and with others, mm -hmm. then we will welcome you. If you don't support, then fine. You're part of the struggle. You're part of the opponents, exactly. right? Okay. So that's how I look at it. Um, right. And I think in terms of, um, you know, the potential for some other nation or some other country to come here and dominate. I mean, again, if we build our movement properly, if we organize ourselves properly, if we d develop the proper relationships based on values, the chance of that happening are not going to, are, are very slim because everybody will be agreed that no group of people should dominate as the white man has. Right. I think, I, right. So, right. so we're, not, we're not looking for people who want to imitate white supremacy. Mm -hmm. How do you, how do you, but how do you not, it's like what you were saying, how do you not, when the African here in America, when the, uh, us, when we're not bringing anything to the table, Hmm. This is what I mean, that we not we have been the, we have, it's about looking at your place. First of all, I think right now we're the second minority, right? Right. Uh, we're the first minority. No, after I think, second, uh, I think we're the, the second. Latinos the Latinos first, have, have come in, yeah. okay, so they've come in place. So you look at the changes at one point in time, This it's about survival. Yes. Right. You know what I'm saying? If you're not bringing anything to the table, you're dependent. Right. And right now we're dependent on the United States government. A lot exactly. of us, we have become dependent on that. When you start to squeeze yourself out, which we're doing slowly, because right now politically and everything else, they're catering and pandering to Latin America because they have the numbers. And sexual deviance. And, and, right. And because we it, ain't, don't, don't we need, I mean, the Latinos, they make the demands. We're not making demands. Exactly. We because get however, oh. and I, I would add to that, that, you know, your question is what do we bring to the table? I mean, I, when you, everything you've said really answers that question. Our people have, throughout U.S. history and even some ways global history, have always been the vanguard of social change. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You, 
you almost never see social change in America mm -hmm. unless black people are in the front. But we're exploiting so, that. Right. So the, what I'm saying is the very fact that we don't have just immigration policies right now is a reflection on the fact that we are not involved. Right. But Man. once we get involved, that's when... So what we bring to the table is the power of to being the, a black person and what that comes with in the context of the United States. Being some of the most progressive, most left, most organized people in the nation. That's, what, that's, that's power. Let me, let me, we, so, me, so what I'm that. saying is we bring power to the table. I agree, exactly. but let me, let me jump in here because see, you, you brought a point, there's several points. It's just it's not much for me to be at hold in my bad. <laughs> uh, when you talked about activism and us being at the forefront, let's go back to the beginning of the American Revolution. Mm -hmm. uh, his name was what? Christmas Crispus Atticus. Atticus. Right. Right. He, Crispus Atticus was with the Americans. He mm -hmm. was a free slave. Mm -hmm. When he was coming to fight against the Redcoats with Whitey, mm -hmm. who did they shoot first? The brother. Okay, now, next. You talk about, <laughs> you understand, you run with but, the white boy to do but, his best. Wait, but let me tell you what you're right. Now, see, there are two paradigms here and paradoxes, because on one hand, you did said that you don't believe America can be overthrown because of this particular power, but then... I, I, I do believe America okay, can Okay, well, believe. great, but this is the other thing you said. You said that I believe that this country, let me see, I'm almost lost. You said that the power of a, oh, you believe that the immigration issue and our ability to be able to right this will come through an upheaval, through anarchy. So uh, at one level... Not necessarily anarchy. Well, uh, through I, social, I use the term through uh, crisis. anarchy. Through you crisis. said upheaval. Yeah, I said a crisis. A crisis, upheaval, crisis. Mm. I mean, it's okay. all, it's pandemonium. <laughs> no. It's not order. Well, that's why I disagree. Okay, so, so you're saying so, so, upheaval is order. Social crises can be created that are organized. Certainly. Those are, those are called revolutions. They are called revolution. Absolutely. Right? So, you know, successful revolutions create a crisis in an unjust system. Exactly. I agree. But there's, they have a plan. Yes. They're organized. Yes. So they're not running around willy-nilly. I'm, I'm not talking about But no, riot. that's what Yanga was saying. That's why he said, what's no. in game? What's, what's, you understand? Yeah. See, at the end of the day, when I talk about a legal component as it pertains to immigration, we have to first identify who we are. Right. That, it, that develops who's going to be part of the team. Mm -hmm. So when we just say Africa, and Africa is a continent that has 52 countries on it, and within those countries there are several different ethnic groups. So when we talk about immigration, there's a, a two-component aspect. It's the immigrate. And it's the place from which they have immigrated from. Mm -hmm. So if you're just like a foster child or a child that's in a, a, a situation where they don't know where that, who their parents are, you have a child and you have parents. The parents have to be looking for the child or the child looking for the parent. If you immigrated from somewhere and they don't w want to acknowledge this is who you are, which is what we have in America, that's why we're segmented. Even so, the transatlantic slave trade should be the key element that unifies us, whether it's Haitian, Jamaican, yeah. the yeah. islands. We all came through the transatlantic slave trade. But how we uproot this global power called America is a spiritual thing, and I know black don't want to go off into that. And, and, and then my thing is, <laughs> you know, it's <laughs> like, the brother, like the beautiful line, brother baby. was saying, like the beautiful brother was saying that the, one of the reasons that the immigration uh, uh, Peace hasn't really taken off is because, and he's right, that Africans here in America have been the at the forefront, have been the power behind social changes, uh, and they have been against oppression and, and the uh, uh, tyr tyr tyranny tyrannical and everything, man, you yes. name it. But we've always been pimped and pandered. Absolutely. And our thing has been marketed, just like we look at the homosexual revolution. When they were saying gay is the new nigger. Yes, sir. You know what I'm saying? Right, I mean, right. to actually they equate. Co opted. Right, to actually equate the homosexual revolution exactly. to well, what yeah, we yeah. were going through as a people, I thought was offensive. But, but, but hold on, yeah, you had Bear Rustin, you got James Baldwin, they were homosexual. Okay. They were homo so, so but they that's have a whole different right. But they they no, feel no, like they have claims they to that. They feel like well, that, but I'm, I mean, to equate it to. But Baynard Rustin never promoted his deviance. Yeah, exactly. he did. That's well, why they had to kick him out and look like Martin Luther King. Well, but here, let me. let me. Bear Rustin was an out brother. I, where I will agree with you is that the the struggle for racial justice exactly and the struggle for S sexuality sexual justice yeah. are different. Totally. However, 
they both involve an oppressed people fighting against Human an rights. oppressor. Right. And so... That's not they, argued against. Okay, so the point I want to make is that, that, again, you know, we can have a lot of different opinions about issues of spirituality, as you do. do. Absolutely. You, we can have difference of opinions about... Um, Methodology. Well, perhaps methodology to a degree, but we do need to have some understanding that there, one of the key struggles that we have in our community is between those who want radical change and those who only want minor reforms. Mm -hmm. right. You know, those mm -hmm. who only want minor reforms mm -hmm. say, well, you know, we'll never actually be free, so exactly. we might as well accept these crumbs mm -hmm. that right. they want. Mm -hmm. And then there are, the there, there, there are other people who say, look, you know, we'll never get anywhere accepting the system as it is, and we exactly. have to change the entire system. Yes. Those are people who want radical change, right. because radical simply means those who go to the root mm -hmm. of a problem. Right. Root, right? So mm -hmm. what I'm calling for are people who believe in radical change. Mm -hmm. Yes. There, I'm calling for people who want to actually build, uh, regardless of what ethnicity or tribe, mm -hmm. what nation, uh -oh. if you black, if you are African mm -hmm. and you support the values that I'm talking about, mm -hmm. then we can cooperate. Now, if you are one of those black people who are just looking for opportunities, yeah. who, well, if you're one of those black people who are just looking for opportunities to find reasons why we can't do something, right. or why we shouldn't mm -hmm. fight, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. if you're one of those black people who are looking for divisions mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. amongst us, right. then I would say this group is not for you. Okay. you know? okay. so, Again, I guess everything I'm saying you have to look at through this lens I talked about. Certainly. And that is, I'm looking for the most progressive Ellis. I understand that there are black people out there who will betray us. Mm -hmm. And those are not the people I'm looking for. Based on the blackness. I think that uh, you're right. I, I, I like what you said, absolutely. But I hope that the group will, I think that what the challenges are, especially me as a nationalist, you know, when people come up my challenge is and my goal is always to see how this affects us directly as black people and i'm hope that any organization will start to work to where these these answers can be addressed what is the importance of us as a black nation mm -hmm. being down with integration how does right. it empower us how does it add to our liberation because we have been co-opted into all kind of movements communist movement mm -hmm. the socialist movement right. the homosexual movement mm -hmm. you know what i'm saying which is and it's like i said it's not to knock any of these movements i believe all people should have the right to be free mm -hmm. and free from oppression mm -hmm. but what we have to stop doing is being the mule mm -hmm. of each movement we will put the bricks on our backs we will carry the load mm -hmm. we will get out there mm -hmm. Chris, we will Chris, christopher christmas Atticus, Atticus. Christmas Atticus. Atticus day. we'll take gunshots <laughs> we'll take all and at the end of the day we still go in the store and get called a nigger. Exactly. We still go into certain parts of California where you have um, um, ignorant Latinos, like you have ignorant Negroes. Right. In this, in this, in, in this, uh, like you said, this senseless ethnic war when we yes. got one oppressor and we're fighting our brown brothers and brown brothers are fighting black brothers. Right. But it comes down to what survival, mm. and that's the real end game of the whole thing. Mm. What will our place be in anywhere we add our power, we'll lend our resources? Mm. What is our place and position in this? Mm. Because. We have to start being more specific about where we're going as African descendants in America. I think too many times our organizations don't address this issue mm -hmm. of who we are, uh, where we came from, how we got here, and what our place will be mm -hmm. doing, whether it be if this country uh, succeeds to continue to be one of the superpowers, imperial superpowers, or whether it crumbles. Where will our place be? Now, now, let me, let me, let me okay, ask ahead. you this, Black. I mean, right. let me ask you this, beloved. Would one of the qualifying items in your estimation be something as simple as a name change. See, one thing about white supremacists and their minions and those who support white people, even though they've enslaved us, they've killed us, they've experimented us, they've mm -hmm. miseducated us, many of them still respect and love the white oppressor's name. Would not one of the qualifying aspects of immigration B, the changing of the name. That's my first question. What, what name are you referring to? Uh, the name that would relate back to where they feel they came from as a Why? precursor. I mean, give me an example of what you mean. I, my name as a slave being in America was Eric. When I came into my Hebrew understanding. Your mama gave you that name. Hello. Yeah. <laughs> 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 you got it. 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 You got it
wait a minute. Wait. <laughs> we talking about dear mama See, like that. See, that's what I'm saying. See, we a mama that yeah. had us eating chillies and yeah, hog mall and fat bag. No <laughs> so my point is, first of all, then is a name change be a relevant component to the co collaboration and the unification of the people who are involved with immigration? And the next thing, remember when Minister Farrakhan, when... Uh, uh, Gaddafi. Uh, Yasser Arafat. Okay. Mm. Not Yasser Arafat. Gaddafi, uh, Gaddafi, Gaddafi, Gaddafi right. was going to give him that money. Ooh, and a, that, the, this white government told him, you better not mm. go, go over there and sit down. So you can't go over there and get that money. Mm. There has to be a legal component as it relates to immigration where other nations see the reason the Latino people have power because they have governments representing Latino. them. We don't have a government. We are a nation within a white supremacist system, but we have we are taxation without representation. I'm going to tell you when, and I'm going to jump in. I know the question was directed for bro, our dear brother Terry. Come on. But I'm going to say not just a government backing them. They have a nationality. Thank you. They have a culture. Thank so you. So that when they boycott, when they move, they move together. Exactly. That's what I'm saying. So if we open up for our dear Haitian brothers, our Jamaican brothers, are they moving with us? Is there is there is this in a sense that's going to bring us closer to that liberation and to that empowerment? Are we just opening up the borders and just well, flooding? And it's not about the crumbs. It's about really survival. We just opening it up for everybody, for us to still be targeted, it, for them to move in. Because we went from, and I'm be brief, we went from uh, the Jews owning the stores and come this on, and that. And on. then when they got empowered and they got Irish, national, they yeah. sold it to the damn yeah, Koreans. Yeah, exactly. Then the Koreans come moved. On. I mean, come brother Boo Boo been working for this Jewish dude for all his life, sitting on the crate guarding the beer forever. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? And then when the Jew sold the store, he didn't sell it to Boo Boo. He didn't right. say, you can, yo, come thank on. you, brother Boo Boo, for working here and, and watching the rest of the black folks that they didn't sell my stuff. He sold it to the Koreans. Exactly. Now that the Koreans out of our community, they selling it to the Indians. Go, but yeah, and, and what we got to understand is that this European, and I'm be brief, okay. this European, he has his law. He defies who is who is who is classified as cockazoid. Exactly. You can be dark as you want to be. You can be a Hindu, come on, be as black as you want to be. When you get in with this European, he will mark you down because he knows he's dying off. So he will mark you down as cockazoid. Right. Exactly. Like he does some of the Arabs. I'm from Cleveland. Yes. Like he does some now the Arabs ain't even Arabs. They're white Arabs. Exactly. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Right. So it's a whole thing. So what I'm saying in the whole scheme of matters the whole scheme of things is we will fight for everybody to come over, but are we fighting when they come over? Are we fight saying, look, we're fighting in the effort to make an alliance, right. to make so this is our thing. We fight for you, yo, but will you help us out on getting this or that? Okay, Are we now we're talking. We don't now we no, no, well, no, no, no. see, okay. I, I, okay. I'd love to answer that because I think in any partnership, again, as I've said, is like first of all, you want to build partners with people who share your values. Yeah. So if right. they don't, they they out. Okay. Okay. Then you want to develop principles of unity, right? Yeah. So the the glue that binds our alliances with any other group together are principles of unity. Like, what, what do we all agree we're fighting? Mm. And, what right, we, and right. let's come to an agreement about, after the struggle's over, what this new society is mm. okay. going to create. Okay. So we put in mechanisms to make sure that we don't end up as oppressed people, be it with like any group. Liberia. Mm. So I think we have to be very kind of very comprehensive in our understandings. And there are ways to deal with this. You, you raise good questions. And I guess I'll repeat it again. Again, it's like, first of all, you build uh, alliances with people who share your, your values. So I'm not proposing building an alliance with a set of folks who will later on betray us, mm -hmm. right? Because they don't share our values. Well, they never do. I mean. <laughs> right? Well, there are some times that people build alliances with people who really uh, don't share your values. Mm -hmm. Like, the, there, there's one period in recent history where you had folks who were so-called socialists building alliances with libertarians who are right, capitalists, right. all to kind of uh, point at some the, the U.S. Fed as a as a as a target. Right. So I think we have to be more comprehensive than that. Um, the value of, uh, you you asked the question about a name change. Yes. And um, that's huge. It's very complicated, but the way. I, I don't have you change your name. No. Uh oh. Uh, and and here's the thing, I don't think that should be a barrier to our people being organized and being unified. But this is a beginning point that shows a paradigm shift in your thought process as far as your ancestry and history. But the only way I can answer that is with the word maybe, because I'm sure there are some black folks who have changed their names who don't agree with the values I've put out here. I know there's some black folks who have not changed their name who do agree. Right. So you have some conservative black folks 
even who may have taken on an African name or who may mm. wear the clothes. You, mm. So you, you see what I'm saying? I, so mm. it's not about your name. It's not even about, uh, you know, what foods you decide to eat. What I'm really interested in is, do you love black people? Mm -hmm. Do you believe in liberation and cooperation? Mm -hmm. Do you believe in human rights and social justice? Mm -hmm. If you believe those things, I welcome you as an African. You see what I'm saying? And then- Who was the first one to call us black? I don't know the answer to that. Uh, but I, I do want to get to this, your point here. And, and I think this kind of wants to get back in line with the other points I want to make. And that is how this affects us directly. Uh, as so-called citizens, and Thank I, and I want to I want to address you. that so-called citizen piece, Thank but you. it addresses us because if we allow a white supremacist capitalist system to exploit our black immigrant brothers and sisters, that means wages and working conditions go down for us too. Mm. If we allow this white supremacist system to increase policing and prisons, we get ensnared in the mass right. incarceration mm -hmm. system too. Right, because y'all look a lot. Right. <laughs> yeah. Wait, that's and, already down. And if we allow this system to detain and deport our black immigrant brothers and They've sisters, been doing. they destroy families and ruin black communities in total. Right. So we have a vested interest in this struggle. So I, I think that's how I look. And let me speak to the citizen piece because uh, in many ways I support what Malcolm said that, you know, citizenship doesn't mean anything. Zero. You know, look at Trayvon Martin Hello. and Jordan Davis. Yes. Being a U.S. citizen didn't protect them Catherine in Johnson. life and didn't win them justice and death. Exactly. Mm. So that's why I'm talking about, I'm going beyond civil rights. Kendrick Johnson. I'm not talking about citizenship. I'm talking about humanity. Human rights. That's right. I'm talking about right. human rights, mm -hmm. social yes. justice. Mm -hmm. And again, I talk about this not just because it's important here in America, mm -hmm. but it, as you mentioned before, it helps us internationalize our struggle. Because mm -hmm. there are black people in South Africa now fighting the ANC because right. the ANC gave in to the white mm -hmm. neoliberal capitalist power mm -hmm. structure. That's right. Mm -hmm. So in many ways, you got South African mm -hmm. blacks who are poorer yes. than they were under, under apartheid. Come on yeah. now. Yeah. Uh -oh. yeah. so, That's what yanka has been saying. All so long. we have to understand that you know, many times these so-called black elites, these Thank bourgeois, you. these right. bourgeois Negroes, Al Sharpton, will, Al Sharpton, FBI and will, 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 <laughs> will turn against us. But the way I weed out these forces in the beginning is again to talk about what we stand for, what we share. What do you share my values? Mm. Do you believe in what I'm believing? Right. Right? right, right. If you do, then you know you can be a part of the struggle. Mm. And at the end of the day, you know, Milcar Cabral said it best that. You know, if people want to join the struggle, especially if they come from these middle class or bourgeois backgrounds, exactly. they have to commit what he called class suicide. Class suicide. Mm. Wow. Mm. Well, you know, we black is a king. Black, you've been trying to, we've been cutting you off. You, you the man that's that well, got us in there right yeah, now. Yeah, yeah. Well, well, well basically, because well, I want to address something that Yang was saying and, 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 and some of what you were saying, you know, it's our responsibility to come to the table and make demands. You know what I'm saying? We can't be like, okay, well, the Jew, you know, he done sold it to the Korean. Now he's got to be our uh, intercessor. You know, we men. You know what I'm saying? So we, we got to come to the table ourselves. And so if we got immigrants, like you said, you know, with like mind and values, say, okay, look, <clears throat> these are, you know, some of the things I want to unite on. I may not agree with the name change, Gideon. But I will say, you know what? I know you like clean water. Yes. I know who's that. You know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? The Haitians that I work with and the Jamaicans yeah. like clean water. So mm -hmm. we can, mm -hmm. you know, what, what, what is our, I guess we have to put down the demands mm -hmm. so we know what, 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 what some of the light values are. And, and believe me, I know Latinos who identify with black people. Yeah. Oh, who yeah, are, yeah. Who, who, would, who would not be opposed to what we're talking mm -hmm. about. Those are the Latinos we want to build with. If you are conservative Latino, later for you, right, right? right? You know, in Louisiana, you have a conservative uh, South oh, Asian man named Jindal, Jindal. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Bobby Jindal. Mm -hmm. He might as well be a white man. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? We would never say, oh, that's the kind of Indian we want to work with. No, we would rather work with an Arundhati Roy and or someone you, like that. And I'm, I'm glad you brought that up because the conservatives, they, they bring in the immigrants that have their values. Mm -hmm. They bring, yeah. they bring in yeah. black yeah. people who yeah. have yeah. their values. That's right. Let me, let me, let me they get an from every you, you, right. you, you even have Democrats, black liberals, 
yes. who espouse these values, who support yes. more prisons. Yes. That's I mean, right. as we've talked about before, about Obama's the, the porter in chief. A black right. man, mm -hmm. son of an uh, African immigrant, is the more, deporting more people than Thank all you. white presidents. Mm -hmm. So, again, we have to understand there's a class struggle even within our community. Now, That's let me right. just bring this point because okay. I know our time is brief. The American Revolution brought about a change in this country. We talked about Crispus Atticus. But what they did, they went to Europeans and they uh, had a list what were called intolerable acts. Mm -hmm. Just like you said, we need to outline what it is that we want and who we want it for. As a Hebrew, I don't want nothing from the white man because mm -hmm. I know ultimately we're going to take this thing, just like what you're saying. But you're looking at it from people who think on a, the same level. I'm looking at it from a spiritual perspective. So if we develop a list and define what these intolerable acts are today, then not only would we mirror the American Revolution, which also was organized by women, by boycotting products sent from Europe, but it would also identify specifically what we want and how we go about the Well, I'm glad you mentioned that because the Black Alliance for Just Immigration came up with its own 10-point plan mm -hmm. for just immigration. Tell us before we go out. Right. Yeah, yeah. Number Take, one, yeah. number 10. Number, no, it started number 10. Number 10. Right. We want to allow all immigrants access to the human right of health care and public benefits. Okay. And number nine. We want to eliminate biometric ID cards and e-verify programs because we know that's nothing else but spying that's inserted into our number bodies. Number eight. We want to dispense with the high cost of filing fees, penalties, and back taxes. Number seven. We want to stop inhumane enforcement of programs and activities. In other words, the, the brutalizing of our people at the border. Number six. We want to shorten the time frame for citizenship and extend extend eligibility dates for every That's black person. That's actually person. number five. Number okay. six is what? <laughs> Stop inhumane <laughs> enforcement of programs and activities. Like number four. We want citizenship for immigrants and temporary statuses. Right? Number three. We want to maintain diversity visa, visa programs. And number two? We want to de-link legalization from border security. And numero uno, number one? We want to expand visa categories for family members all over the world. And check it out. Y'all can find the brother. Check him out on www.blackalliance.org. Uh, man, it's really something to look into. It's a thing that I think that all revolutionaries, everybody should look into. This, you know, I struggle for liberation. And freedom is not going to be contained to one aspect of it. Check the brother out, Black Alliance for Just Immigration. Brother Terry. got a phone number. got a phone number. You want to give him? Oh, yeah, 404-401-8817. You're a beautiful brother. Man. Thank you all, man. appreciate you. I love y'all, too. Brother. I want to do this. Show. to the arena, man. Yeah. Hello, hold baby. your own, it's man. Tough it's tough right. Hey, man. You know, we're going to throw a match with that. Hold bars up in here. So we appreciate you coming. It's a good conversation. hold your own, brother. Yeah. I'm glad to be in y'all presence. Yeah, we're going, you know, um. We're going to have you come back home, man, because we got some more issues to discuss. Mm -hmm. you know, uh, yeah, I'd love to talk with you all about mass incarceration. That's yes. one of the pieces yes. we yes. deal Bro. with. Right I want to talk about cooperative economics mm -hmm. because we okay. believe economic justice mm -hmm. and yes. liberation has to be an aspect of what we do. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I also want to talk about how we can deal with issues of uh, uh, racial profiling and, and yes. all of that. Okay, thing. good. You ain't going to change whitey now. See, that's the whole problem. I don't care what we say, white is a killer. It ain't about trying to change, trying to change it. But he's trying to change it. Yeah. But again, I'm not, I'm not trying killer. to change their hearts. No, no. I'm not yeah. concerned about bigots. Yeah. Exactly. I want to create a crisis in the system. Okay. I want to change the system. Revolution! Right. Oh, revolution. Revolution. Yeah. This is the revolutionary stuff. The revolution is being televised. <laughs> <laughs> also, I want to... Um, Real quick, I wanted to, add, well, I know we got to wind up real soon, but yeah, we're going to have you back on real soon because we got, like I said, we got we got some issues, some international issues I'm going to deal with, you know, um, Saudi Arabia being one of them, mm. you know, mm. I want to call it first, they're going to overthrow that monarchy, watch what I tell y'all. <laughs> you don't think so, yeah, yeah, yeah. Huh? you don't think so? Uh, yeah, no, nah, you know what, it's going to be, it's going to be a minute, and I know that's a whole nother show, it's going to be a minute, man, <laughs> I know. Because the whole way that thing is set up. Constitutional monarchy? It's, it's, that's a step. They're trying to get some democracy. They're trying to get them lot. kings up out of there. But, you know, it's going to be a way that thing is set up. It's going to be a minute. It's going to be some. It's going to be ugly. That's going to be but, real you know, ugly. We, we start that. We'd have to start a whole nother show. Yeah, yeah you got Africans true. there oppressed, too. Oh, oh man. man. Oh, you oh, man. Yeah. man, you got, listen, man, you got black. They told one brother who went over there, and just to be brief, uh, they wouldn't let he was a, he's a dark Arab. 
And his folks are light Arab. You know, they, they purposely breed with white people and other light Arab. Right, right. And he said uh, his folks won't even let him drive the car because he said the people are going to think you're a chauffeur. Mm. I mean, when they get over there, they take those Africans' passports and stuff like that. Yes. Wow. So you talking about? Yeah, you talking? They let? Huh? Why? Oh, in no, I said why? In no, Dubai, yeah. and Dubai. So they work on, to do with yeah. the passports. Right now, we don't have authority over passports 